Good morning, folks. Everything new under the sun. What you're looking at is a page from the Woe book that Ken Hoven put out, What on Earth is About to Happen. And this is one of the ones I want to do a, a larger video on, but basically he lines up um, three different chapters, which are effectively t uh, speaking about the same thing, and uh, marks them out for what is related to um, um, the last days, the day of the Lord, um, the timing of the rapture, etc. And uh, let me let me go to this here. If I scroll down here, you can see uh, various uh, parts. So in the in the green there, you can see the abomination of desolation. So in each passage, he's marked out where the abomination of desolation happens, and each uh, chapter provides a bit more detail on what's uh, about to happen. Um, it goes on, it's speaking of um, <clears throat> the period of the Great Tribulation, which is the yellow part. So the yellow part in each of the chapters is speaking about um, the affliction, um, the, the tribulation, uh, the, the days of vengeance that are happening. And then in the orange part, it goes on uh, to immediately after the tribulation of those days, uh, a sign happens and the, and the sun, uh, or and the, uh, uh, the sun is darkened, the moon does not give its light, and this then goes on to speak about the Son of Man coming in the clouds. And this is um, the gathering of the elect from the four corners of the earth. So there's a, um, a, a kind of a chronological reading of these three chapters. Uh, when put uh, parallel, you can see that they're uh, speaking about the same thing. So interesting situation. And uh, what I want to bring to your attention um, is, and I'm just going to read from uh, Mark, just as an example, Mark 13. Um, and it says, when you, in chapter, in verse 7, when you, you hear of uh, rumors, uh, let me, uh, yeah, can you see that? <clears throat> and when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must be, but the end shall not be yet, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. And there shall be famines, troubles, and these are the beginnings of sorrows. I submit to you that we will have wars, rumors of wars, that's what I'm going to talk about today, that will trigger an economic collapse, which causes famines and troubles, and the Bible states that these are the beginnings of the sorrows. And then, once that happens, then Christians will start being delivered up. Verse 9, they will deliver you up to councils and in synagogues. This is going to happen in a short period of time, I think. Just prior to the seven-year uh, seven period, um, the three-and-a-half-year tribulation, and then the three-and-a-half year, years of uh, the wrath of uh, God. Um, <clears throat> and I believe that this is going to happen uh, in quick succession. Um, God's wrath actually maybe I think, is shorter than three-and-a-half years. Um, that, that's another subject, I guess. Um, but um, there's going to be great persecution on the Christian. Um, what precedes the great persecution? Uh, it sounds like economic collapse, famines, um, and wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, great worldwide upheaval. And this is really setting the stage so that a one world leader can come in, an antichrist figure can come in, um, take the reins, control the world bring into effect a one-world currency because the economy has just collapsed and the world needs it, and uh, and uh, by promise of fixing the, the worldwide famine issue. And, uh, and he implements this seven-year period um, where probably final status will be decided after the seven-year period of final status of Jerusalem. But he implements this, and the world thinks that uh, there is some sort of peace um, because the world wants to uh, have peace in the Middle East. So this leads into, and hopefully I will get to doing another video on this, but this leads into then um, the situation happening uh, in uh, that I think is, is coming up, and, and it sounds like uh, maybe some war is going to be happening. Um, let me turn that off. Oh, I didn't, uh, let's see. All right, here, so here we are uh, with the... A regular thing. Oops. Let me get this. Bring this over here. I didn't have this set up, um, but I'll, I'll provide you several articles, and it looks like we could be going to war uh, this summer. Netanyahu, and so they're lining up. And and remember, if you've been watching the videos, I've, I've been stating that there's been tanks lining up of tanks. There's a couple of aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean. 
they're gearing up for something. And not only that, but they had the they applied the sanctions on Iran, and Iran is getting desperate. Iran is in a corner. Um, they're losing money real quick, and so Iran is even threatening um, the states, um, the great Satan, the little Satan. It's from JPost.com. Netanyahu on Iran. We will not let. Uh, them get nuclear arms. So this is a fresh article. Um, so why is he stating this again? Why is he restating this? He several, said this several times in the past, um, but he is stating this again. Netanyahu's comments were Israel's first response to Iran's announcement that it will continue its nuclear program. So due to the sanctions, Iran is hitting back and saying, you know what, we're going to roll back um, the concessions we made with the nuclear agreement. We're going to start uh, producing and, and working towards a nuclear weapon again. And uh, so Netanyahu says, uh, I, Israel will not let Iran attain nuclear weapons. Um, Netanyahu's comments came after the government's Central Remembrance Day ceremony at Mount Herzl Military Cemetery honoring the country's 23,741 fallen soldiers, uh, it says. So um, this is coming out. He says uh, they will uh, not uh, let Iran get nuclear weapons. So, okay, that, that in and of itself uh, doesn't mean anything. But we have several articles here which uh, seem to indicate that um, something's stirring. Um, there's certainly a buildup in military equipment, and there seems to be a, uh, an initiation of rhetoric uh, related to it as well. Iran threatens uranium enrichment if world powers do not keep promises. Iran told ambassadors from the signatory countries that it would roll back some of its commitments under the 2015 nuclear deal. Um, uh, Iran said it would roll back it. the commitments. Uh, Rouhani said Tehran would move on to resuming high-level uranium enrichment if remaining signatories, Britain, France, Germany, China, Russia, did not make good on promises to shield its oil and banking sector. So basically, if Iran gets to continue making lots of money, um, they're apparently going to uh, at least uh, uh, pretend to um, not start developing nuclear weapons again. France's defense minister said she wanted to keep the nuclear deal alive, but warned if uh, Iran if uh, it could face more sanctions if it did not honor part of the deal. Today, nothing would be worse than Iran itself leaving this agreement, um, <clears throat> um, Florence Party Parley told BFM TV. So Iran is threatening um, to start uh, attempting to produce nuclear weapons again. And I would suspect this is just... Uh, rhetoric. They probably already are uh, working towards it as fast as they can, uh, as long as they don't get caught. And uh, so we we I've spoken many videos in the past, but the significant tank buildup, the the U.S. Uh, military buildup. But what's interesting in all this is that the U.S. is uh, significantly involved in in the buildup here, but they're not mentioned in last day's prophetic battles. And so where we are, I think, is in. Uh, we are in um, the wars, rumors of wars uh, section here. Let me uh, turn this on again. So it says in verse 7, you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. Now remember that this is uh, this is uh, prior to, this is stuff that happens prior to um, the abomination of desolation. Um, this is uh, prior to um, a lot of uh, the great persecution that is coming. So if you take these verses chronologically, wars, rumors of wars, I think that's what we're talking about now. But the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, but the end is not yet. There will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of, of sorrows. The end is not yet. These are the beginnings of things. So I think what is triggered off this is uh, uh, the U.S. is involved right now. Economic collapse occurs. Famine occurs. To, and this takes all Western nations out of the running. They have no interest or money uh, to wage war in the Middle East at that point. And all you're left with is the dictators, um, the Putins of the world, the, the, the um, uh, China, uh, for example. Um, uh, these uh, military di dictatorships, these strong-armed uh, governments, uh, you know, where during an economic collapse, they're not going to collapse because they have loyalty and they will put people in jail if they uh, disagree or uprise uh, against the government. Whereas in Western nations, um, they, you know, during an economic collapse, they basically collapse, and um, uh, you know, there could be civil war internally, um, but they're not—they're probably not going to be acting on the world stage anymore. And so I think that's part of the uh, order of events here um, that we're leading to a time of, of war. I think you know, maybe this summer. Um, this is what these articles lead me to believe, um, and out of that uh, is triggered an economic collapse. And if you look at the economic. Uh, 
articles and news stories out uh, these days. It looks like you know uh, China with the trade deal, um, and, and there's some uh, stuff that decisions I guess going to be made on Friday. And if they uh, if they pull out of the trade deal, um, then uh, articles are saying you know that's that could be a trigger event for the economic collapse. Anything could be the trigger event. Um, it's held up by na- right now by um, basically uh, you know. Uh, uh, bubble gum and, and elastics, uh, the world economy is held together uh, that way. There's there's no fundamental stability there. It's held up by quantitative easing, free money, etc. Uh, the U.S. alone is uh, uh, $22 trillion in debt, and so it's ready to go down basically at any a time. So let's go on here. So I, Iran is going to continue with um, its uh, uranium enrichment. Let's see what else is happening. U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo visits Iraq amid Iran tensions. <clears throat> so he skipped a uh, visit with um, the German Chancellor um, to go and uh, meet in uh, Iraq uh, over Iran. U.S. Sec- Secretary of State Pompeo made unscheduled fleeting visit to Iraq amid growing tensions with Iran. So there's military buildup and there's a confirmation of growing tensions. Pompeo canceled a trip to Berlin. <clears throat> he told the leaders that the U.S. did not want anybody interfering in their country. Um, uh, the uh, the Iraqi leaders said that. The visit came days after the U.S. deployed an aircraft carrier to the region. Officers said the deployment was in response to threats to U.S. forces and its allies from uh, Iran. So Iran is threatening. On Tuesday, it was revealed that U.S. was sending B-52 bombers. I think I, have, <clears throat> I think I have the article here, excuse me, about the B-52 bomber. So there's a significant buildup of uh, military hardware, and they're not going to move all this equipment for nothing. Um, uh, I would uh, submit to you that uh, this is probably going to be used in some fashion. U.S. deploying four B-52 bombers in response to possible attack by Iran. So the war rhetoric, it, it, the, the war drums are, are beating right now. It, it looks like we're que- queuing up for something in the summer. Pentagon confirmed Tuesday that the deployment includes four uh, four B-52 bombers, two of which reportedly departed Tuesday from Barksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana, and are expected to arrive Wednesday at al Udeid Air Base in Qatar. And in Qatar, they also have a significant buildup of tanks. This is where the tank buildup was, uh, near the border of Iran. I think, uh, I think Iraq... Uh, the country of Iraq has a small um, width of uh, land that goes uh, between Iran uh, and Qatar. Uh, the air power deployment comes two days after National Security Advisor John Bolton said in a statement that a bomber task force for the USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group would be deployed to the Middle East. Uh, Bolton said the deployment was in response to a number of troubling uh, escalatory indications and warnings. So they think there's something coming. They think um, they need to spend a lot of money, basically, and send military equipment uh, around Iran uh, because apparently Iran is gearing up for something. This is what uh, U.S. intelligence thinks. Um, could it be all a show of force? It could be. Usually they just send aircraft carriers there. Um, they don't also line up tanks on the border. They don't also send uh, B-52 aircraft um, into the region. If they're just trying to show uh, some force... They could launch some, you know, Scud missiles, other uh, ballistic missiles from aircraft carriers or other uh, floating vehicles, uh, but they don't need uh, massive B-52 bombers. So you have all the weapons of war lining up here, um, which I think um, leads to the speculation that um, they're getting ready for war, and Iran seems to be getting ready for war. Um, what does Islamic Jihad says uh, say about it? Um, and they are uh, a proxy group of Iran, funded by Iran. Um, so you would think they would know something if Iran had any <clears throat> visions of uh, escalation. Remember also that the proxies, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, Islamic Jihad, are used by Iran uh, when Iran wants to distract attention away from the country proper. So if... Uh, if, if uh, the military is building up Iran, around Iran. They're going to ask their proxies to start uh, lobbing missiles at Israel um, so that Israel and the U.S. are focused on Israel's safety immediately um, but from Gaza, from uh, Lebanon, and so that Israel doesn't have to 
<clears throat> and so that Israel and the U.S. maybe don't have time or or, or uh, ability, uh, resources necessarily to um, get closer to Iran, and so expect um, some uh, shots fired um, to attempt to distract away from what appears to be a significant military buildup against Iran. Islamic Jihad says war with Israel's coming this summer. Okay. Leader of Islamic Jihad believes the recent deadly flare-up between Israel and Gaza militants was a military exercise. That means there was planning, um, there was uh, strategy involved here, all probably coming down from Iran, ahead of a large-scale war coming this summer. So not only do you have significant military buildup by the U.S. and, and Israel, <clears throat> but you also have suggestion by um, the uh, Gaza militants uh, they're saying war is coming this summer, and they're practicing effectively. The latest round of cross-border fighting, which erupted over the weekend, uh, Palestinian militants fired more than 700 rockets against Israel, killing four Israelis. Uh, the first Israeli fat fatalities from rocket fire since the 50-day war in 2015, known as Op uh, Operation Protective Edge. On Monday, Egypt-mediated ceasefire was reached between Palestinian factions and Israeli officials. What are they saying? I anticipate a war to erupt in the summer. I wonder why they anticipate that. Were they told something by Iran? Following Israel's attempts to disarm Palestinian factions in uh, Gaza. Um, they're basically, they basically call this a live fire uh, practice uh, um, against uh, Israel. Um, and a greater war to come. So you have this significant military hardware build up against Iran. And uh, I think there will be uh, an outburst of the proxy organizations against Israel, really, again, to deflect uh, attention from Iran. So you have the story of B-52 bombers heading to Iran. You have Mike Pompeo speaking of growing tensions related to Iran. You have Iran saying that they are going to roll back um, some of their commitments from the 2015 nuclear deal so that they can uh, start enhancing... Um, uh, what does it say here? Uh, enhancing uranium uh, again to a high level. Why do they need high level uranium enrichment? The only thing you need that for is weaponry. If you just want nuclear power stations, you only need a low level of enrichment of uranium uh, to, to make power, but you need a high level uh, for weapons, for dirty bombs, for nuclear weapons, etc. And, um, and so again, I, I go back to um, the first article here um, that Netanyahu states that uh, they will not let Iran get nuclear weapons. And so the buildup apparently, and, and there's more articles I could provide, but the uh, buildup apparently is all related uh, to this. And so I go back. I go back to, um, let's see here, I go back to this. Um, and even if I read um, from Luke, let's read from Luke here, it says, Take heed that you are not deceived. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. The time draweth near. I think we're within months now. Maybe uh, 12, 18 months, uh, even uh, 24 months uh, from uh, massive events occurring. But verse 9, and this is in Luke, it says, When ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must come to pass. So these things are going to happen. Wars are going to happen. Um, commotions are going to happen. This is the this is what the articles are that I'm speaking of right now. But the end is not by and by. The end is not yet. Nation is going to rise against a nation. Is it the Israel, U.S. against Iran? Great earthquakes are going to come. Famines, pestilences are going to come. But this is before um, the persecution. This is before the real the real last days, significant end time battles uh, occur. I think we're in the blue section here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so I think uh, uh, wars and rumors of wars speak of uh, um, the U.S. being against Iran. Any action by the U.S. at this point, why? Because I think the U.S. is removed from power once economic collapse happens. So what happens after that? Well, famine and pestilence. Why does famine happen? Probably because economic collapse comes, and that's what takes out the United States and all Western nations uh, from any significant uh, world power, superpower status. Uh, but before uh, these things, they're going to start uh, laying hands on you. Uh, before uh, the signs in the heavens um, uh, occur, they're going to start laying hands. They're going to start persecuting us. And what's happening in North America right now 
and around the world, uh, in many nations, Christians are being persecuted. Um, Notre Dame burned down. You have the slaughter of uh, Christians uh, in uh, Sri Lanka. You have the slaughter of um, and, and torture of Christians in Egypt, all around the world. Um, and in uh, Canada, in the U.S., um, Christians are being persecuted there. Um, they're not allowed to um, even uh, speak anymore. Uh, and they're not allowed to. It's hate speech to say that there are two genders. It's hate speech to say that there's male and female. Um, and, and they're putting people in jail uh, for speaking out about this kind of stuff now, uh, even in uh, Canada. There's there's a new story about a, a husband who was speaking about, out about his... Um, what, was, what was it? His... Uh, um, son who was given hormone uh, they, they were chemically castrating the son because the son wanted to be a, a, a daughter the son wanted to be a girl and he was speaking out on this not even doing anything against or, or preventing it uh, but the uh, courts came out and said look we'll put you in jail if you continue to speak out against uh, this child who's being chemically castrated um, and uh, it wants to be, uh, you know, transgender. Um, so you can't speak out about this stuff anymore. You're you're being threatened with jail at this point. Well, we're being threatened with jail. Christians are. Uh, so we're on the verge of significant uh, persecution. What does it say? Delivering you up to the synagogues and into the prisons. Christians will start being put in jail when they stand up uh, for. Um, the Bible, uh, they're going to be called haters, they're going to be called bigots, um, and uh, Christians are going to be persecuted heavily. They are already in the rest of the world. They're already being put to death, being put in jail around the rest of the world. Ken Hoven had um, some people from, a pastor from Vietnam who was beaten, who was put in jail, whose wife was humiliated, um, and it's all because he is uh, preaching the gospel in Vietnam, and they don't allow that. They've destroyed his church several times. Um, the, the jails in Vietnam, Vietnam are filled with Christians uh, who are uh, beaten, tortured, um, put into slave labor, etc. We are in these days. We are in the blue section here. This is the precursor um, to uh, the abomination of desolation. This is a precursor to uh, Ezekiel 38, Isaiah 17. And um, this is uh, is coming this is upon us guys thanks for watching i'll leave it there we'll see you guys in the next video